She is worth far more than rubies. Her children arise and call her blessed. Honor her for all that her hands have done. Proverbs 31, 10, 28, 31. It's a weird one. It's a piecemeal bits of proverb. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, I think it has a lot to say about how much the uh, the Bible really, really talks positively about motherhood. Uh, but we'll get to that. See you on the other side. Welcome back to Deep in Bear Country, a Berenstain Bear cast. I am your host, Phil Gonzalez, and this week, if you're listening to this at the day it drops, the moment it drops, my apologies for it being late. If you're listening to it at any other point during ever, any time ever, uh, ignore what I just said. This is a Mother's Day episode, and as such, I am happy that I've actually gotten it out before Mother's Day. That doesn't always happen. Each year, it's a mystery of when I will actually, if I'll actually produce a Mother's Day episode. But I did remember the Mother's Day book this year, and the Mother's Day book this year is is Mother's Day Blessings, the Berenstain Bears, Mother's Day Blessings, a Living Lights book, Zonder Kids, a faith story. It is from 2016, and it's uh, it's interesting. It brings up a few things. It covers some stuff we've never covered before, and it raises a few questions. Now, my original intent was to have some actual mothers on the show, but you know what? I've been called a mother enough times in different formations of the word and sentiment. I'll 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 represent myself. I'm not a mom. I'm Obviously, I'm a dad. Uh, I've talked about my dadhood quite a bit, but I do live with a mother, and I did live with a mother for the whole first chunk of my life. I have been surrounded by mothers, and so I'm a little bit of an authority on the subject. But before we get into what the Berenstain Bears Mother's Day Blessings is about, let's talk about what Mother's Day itself is about. That's right. I wanted to cover a little bit of Mother's Day history because I think Mother's Day is one of those grossly misunderstood holidays. Not that people don't understand what it is, but that people don't understand what it was intended to be on its inception. Mother's Day is not like Christmas. You're not going to do a lot of, like, digging through clues to find the origin of Mother's Day. We know the origin of Mother's Day. We know the founder of Mother's Day. We know the corruption of Mother's Day, and we know the fallout of the... Like, we, we have... This is charted. This is relative recent human history, as opposed to something like Christmas, whose origins are, you know, many and varied and whose influence... Oh, never mind. I've talked about the history of Christmas. Mother's Day is, is a lot simpler. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm going to go all the way back into all mothers type celebrations. We're not talking about mother goddesses. We're not talking about Mother Earth, although there are Mother's Days that celebrate various, you know, mother goddesses, celebrate Gaia, celebrate any kind of motherhood thing. There's, There have been spiritual celebrations and acknowledgments of, of mothers and just fertility in general. That's as old as the hills. We're not going back that far. We're not going to talk about that because we don't have as much time and I really want to get to this book, The Baron St. Bear's Mother's Day Blessings. But first, what is Mother's Day? When when you think about Mother's Day, uh, I tend to think about a lot of people saying Mother's Day is a fake holiday, which is, I, I think I've talked about this before. All holidays are fake holidays. No holidays are biological imperatives. They do not exist within us. We did not evolve to celebrate any specific holidays, even your birthday, which is the most like biologically fundamental day. You can more or less pinpoint your day of birth. You know more or less when that happened, depending on when you think you actually became you. Uh, but you know that. But the the there's no biological impulse. There's no natural impulse to celebrate, to acknowledge that day every year for the rest of your life. Like each year you're not like you're not like walking around and when midnight hits or what like the exact year from your birth, you're not like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. You don't like just do that automatically. In fact, if no one told you, you probably never, it would never occur to you if that wasn't a thing. Uh, but we celebrate birthdays still fake holidays. It's all fake. We're, they're all made up. I mean, that's it. Like all holidays are made up. Some of them have a little more, you know, backbone than others. But Mother's Day is not one of those people say, ah, it's a, it's just a greeting. It's a greeting card holiday. It's just there to, it's just there to keep the, the greeting card people in business. And I'm A, 
I think you're giving, I think you're attributing a lot more influence and power to, to the greeting card companies. I don't think there are as, I don't think the greeting card cabal is as, is as strong as it used to be. I don't think it is the omnipresent decision maker in our nation or our world that I guess you think it once was. D is Hallmark as powerful as the tobacco lobby? Maybe used to be, but probably not anymore. Like probably not enough to like, there are, they are probably not pouring funds into our lawmakers' pockets. I mean, they might be. I am sure they are owned by ConAgra or something. I'm sure Hallmark is like a division of some like multi-global, multinational corporation that is just there to like exercise its authority over our decisions and our, our well-being. However, I have it on good authority. That's not why Mother's Day existed in the first place. It might be why it exists now, but that is not the origin of Mother's Day. Uh, like most holidays, I guess I could say like many holidays, its origins are a lot more pure pure, a lot more positive, and a lot more concrete than you might give it credit for. So there's three key figures in the origins of Mother's Day. Anne Reeves Jarvis, Julia Ward Howe, and Anna M. Jarvis. Now, Anne Reeves Jarvis uh, was an Appalachian homemaker and activist who started Mother's Day work clubs to improve sanitary conditions and to reduce infant mortality in Appalachia. These, she has, so she had these clubs, uh, and they sought to, pro and this is, I'm reading this as a quote, uh, they've sought to provide assistance and education to families in order to reduce disease and infant mortality. These clubs raised money to buy medicine and to hire women to work in families where the mother suffered from tuberculosis or other health problems. They developed programs to inspect milk long before there were state requirements. Club members visited households to educate mothers and their families about improving sanitation and overall health. So what we're looking at here is a woman who, who lived in a rural area who recognized a need for education about sanitation and, and, and health, and so put together these clubs so and, and it was mother's plural possessive s day work club so it's the mother's day work clubs was kind of where that whole idea in america kicked off uh the, again there's nothing religious about this this isn't tied to any specific day these are just mother's day work clubs uh and so she's doing this now during the civil war uh they shift their focus uh, because now they're they are they are turning towards uh, you know, sort of benefiting society as a whole. Now this is in Virginia, and if you remember your history, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, split off from Virginia during during like the lead up to the Civil War or to the Civil War uh, in order to remain with the Union. However, these organizations uh, did not favor one side or the other. The whole idea was that in the in the sense of in the sense of humanity and pi and and like the spirit. Of, of humanity, human health and goodness. Uh, the idea was that they, the, these organizations would help anyone, these Mother's Day work club. Uh, and they actually came up with a thing called Mother's Friendship Day in order to foster peace just in general, just peace in general. There's a lot of stories about like what these clubs did. You can read about them online. There's been articles written about them, books written about them. A really positive attempt to bring about peace, but also Mike Berenstain, I know he would appreciate this, not just a general idea of peace and happiness, but also concrete deeds, actually going out and taking charge and educating and bringing health to the community, caring for people, putting their money where their mouth is, walking the talk. Uh, so we'll get back to this. So that's Anne Reeves Jarvis. She was doing all this. Uh, 1870 was the Mother's Day for Peace to promote peace and to condemn war. Now, I, and I know that this Mother's Day for Peace continued up until the lead up to our involvement in World War I when all peace went out the window. That's the funny thing about calling for peace, like huge calls for peace. You got them until the war is on its way and you see the war and instead of like ramping up the calls for peace, uh, you you just, you have to shut up basically is how it works. That's the way it's always been. You just, now it's time for you to shut up because talking about peace is not good for, say it with me, morale. That, that, that nebulous concept known as morale. Apparently if you criticize war in a time of war, that's bad for, for the war. That's bad for morale. So that's when the Mother's Day for Peace initiative kind of ended was in the lead up to our involvement in world war one now we'll get back to ann reeves jarvis there's another woman her name is julia ward howe uh, Julia Ward Howe was a poet and a reformer. She was known for writing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And uh, you know what? I got this wrong. Julia Ward Howe initiated the Mother's 
Doomsday for Pete. That's where I, I was like, wait, what does Julie Ward have to do? Forget everything I said about Anne Reeves Jarvis. No, she was still doing the Women's Brigades and Mother's Friendship Day. It's Julia Ward Howe. I put my bullet points too close together. It's Julia Ward Howe who initiated the Mother's Day for Pete. So everything I said about Anne Reeves Jarvis initiated, you don't care. It's two women with three names each. Uh, now, so that we have Julia Ward Howe, Mother's Day for Pete. So we have, and that's a term that like exists in the national like conscious. So Anne Reeves Jarvis ends up dying in 1907. This is like, I think, okay. Yeah. She dies in 1905. Uh, in, let's see. Or maybe she, okay. I'm confused on the day of her death. All I know is that Anna Jarvis, Anne Reeves Jarvis's daughter, launches a campaign for a national Mother's Day. Uh, after her mother's, I, I have after her mother's death in 1905. I don't know if I meant after her mother's death in 1905 or a, launched a campaign after her mother's death in 1905. It's one of the two. I could go back and look it up. I'm not going to. Just know that Anna M. Jarvis was like, my mom did a lot of really cool stuff. I'd like to commemorate everything she did for the people in Appalachia, the people around the nation, the people of Virginia. Uh, in 1907, she has a memorial service for her mother in Grafton, West Virginia, which I believe is still considered like the global uh, uh, capital of Mother's Day. Uh, and then by 1908, she had orchestrated a service honoring all mothers on the second Sunday in May, leading to the establishment of Mother's Day. Uh, and that was still kind of a local celebration. Uh, but then it starts gaining traction. The mayor of Philadelphia is a huge fan of it, declares a Mother's Day on the second Sunday in May. And then finally, Woodrow Wilson declared the second Sunday in May as officially Mother's Day, as a national, nationally recognized day in 1914. Now, you may be thinking, oh, Ann M. Jarvis was probably pretty thrilled about this. Ann M. Jarvis was not thrilled about this. Uh, she was not a fan of the spread of Mother's Day. So I'm going to read, this is a direct read. Uh, in 1912, uh, she trademarked the phrase, quote, second Sunday in May, Mother's Day, Anna Jarvis, founder, and created the Mother's Day International Association. She specifically noted, and this is for all you spellers out there, she specifically noted that mothers in Mother's Day should, quote, be a singular possessive, mother apostrophe S, should be a singular possessive for each family to honor its own mother, not a plural possessive commemorating all mothers in the world and i find that amusing that she was like no 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 no, you gotta even though we're celebrating all mothers you focus on just the one <laughs> like that's you, you have to follow the mother's day rules uh and that's the spelling that woodrow wilson used in his 1914 presidential proclamation and in the u.s congress and relevant bills and by other u.s presidents in their mother's day proclamations now the legacy of this however is that anna jarvis ended up being very critical of mother's day at, from like that point on she was like, mm, it's gotten commercial. She felt it strayed from its original spirit of personal commemoration. Uh, specifically, she hated two things. Two things she hated. Like, like called them out publicly as worthless gestures. And those are sending greeting cards. If you send a greeting card to your mother, she said, that meant you were too lazy to write her a letter or give her a call or visit her or do anything else. Second, bringing her chocolates. She's like, you bring your mom chocolates and the kids just eat them all themselves anyway. What's the point of it? Candy and, candy and cards. I am sure she had strong feelings about flowers as well. Actually, I believe it was the white carnation was the original symbol of Mother's Day in honor of her own mother. And you were supposed to you were supposed to sell white car, like wear a white carnation, but then uh, florist floral shops are like, oh, we'll just jack up the prices on those things around Mother's Day, and that just infuriated her. So yes, the flowers also infuriated her, and she tried she uh, until she was committed to a sanitarium for health reasons by the end of her life uh she fought to have mother's day repealed that was like her thing she wanted the eradication of mother's day she thought it had lost its spirit it lost it as she put it like its sentiment like the, the the legit sentiment she thought it was gone she thought it was trash she wanted to get rid of mother's day and it was actually other women's organizations that sort of were like that's great that that it's a perfectly okay for you to feel that way we like getting the candy so if you could just mm, just zip it. Just keep it to yourself. We're fond of the can. Uh, so that's just so Mother's Day started as a public health and peace initiative and turned into just sort of this nationally and then internationally because America's Mother's Day is kind of what led to other countries starting their Mother's Day. It became a big thing. It became a big thing. Uh, but it started as a public health and peace initiative. And I wanted to point that out because that's kind of at the heart of what this book is, what our book this week is. It says it's about Mother's Day blessings and it more or less is. It's a religious book. This is 
a Sonder Kids book, but I really want to touch on the public health and peace messaging of the original Mother's Day. And I want to see if the Berenstain Bears Mother's Day blessings uh, commemorates that. Uh, yeah, how much it has to do with the initial meaning of my Mother's Day. Now, I'm not going to hold Mike accountable for, I don't know, like, oh, you went against the the the, 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 the wishes of Anna M. Jarvis. Like, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be your 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 typical uh, Jarvisite uh, picking over the way you choose to celebrate and commemorate Mother's Day with your goofy bear books. No, I am going to, uh, I'm going to just, we're just going to see like how well it adheres to the original intentions of Mother's Day and, uh, and uh, what it has to do with the Bible. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, so we start off with a quote, uh, sort of. She is worth far more than rubies. Her children arise and call her blessed. Honor her for all that her hands have done. Proverbs, and it says Proverbs 31, then 10, 28, 31, which means that Mike took lines from Proverbs 31 and pieced them together into sort of a thing that you could assume is about mothers, except that they all come from the epilogue of Proverbs, of this section of Proverbs, from the sayings of King Lemuel. Uh, and this is this section is called the wife of noble character. It's not talking about a mother. I mean, she is a mother in the proverb, but it's really about a good wife. Uh, I mean, it starts off with a wife of noble character. Who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Like, so the, the, the first statement, she is worth far more than rubies, is, is a comment on the fact that it's really hard to find a good wife. Like, not a, a really good wife with a good character. She's worth, she's as rare as hen's teeth, as they used to say. Uh, the next part of the of the quote is, her children arise and call her blessed. And that is, that's line 28. Um says that uh, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. So yes, it is about mothers, uh, but it's also about being a good wife and housekeeper and homemaker and diplomat within the household. This whole section of the proverb is very much about like, just sort of like laying down what makes a good wife and celebrating that wife. But again, it's, it's very wife specific. Uh, a real good quote for a wife guy. And then the final line is, honor her for all that her hands have done. Uh, and the rest of the line is, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So, I mean, I guess Bear Town doesn't have city gates, so we'll let that go. But uh, but that's the weird, the hilarious little uh, quote that Mike cobbled together for the beginning of this Mother's Day book. Again, the Bible doesn't like go on about how awesome many things are besides God. So it really is hard to find like quotes about picking up your room for instance you got to work to make that to make that happen and i and i respect i respect the i don't know i won't say respect the hustle mike i respect the hustle i respect the extra credit work you did putting a whole new bible verse together uh kudos to that so mother's day's coming up in bear country uh, and we see a lot of, uh, we see birds and woodchucks, we see deer, like they're all being, being good mom. Uh, and, and so brother and sister and honey are, are trying to figure out what they want to do for Mother's Day. Uh, they're trying to come up with something special. They, so they go to talk to their dad and he's like, well, we want to, well, you know, we're, let's, let's go to a Sunday brunch, the Bear Country Inn, which I hope they've already made reservations for, by the way. And, uh, and the kids are like, well, that's a good idea. Let's invite our grandparents as well. We can make it a Mother's Day surprise. And brother's like, yeah, we can go right after church. So that's great. They're like, great. That's a good, solid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back for one second and just say, good, solid idea. Good, solid idea. Uh, you know that, you know that everyone likes eating there. You know that it takes reservations, I assume. Uh, and it's a good place to go after church. You're hungry for a little, for a little snackaroo, and you can make it a surprise. That's a solid Mother's Day idea. Doesn't take a lot of effort. It's thoughtful. It's personalized. Can make a good surprise. Fill your, surround yourself with hearts. Right on. So we're specifically looking at the origins of Mother's Day, right? Right? Honor your specific mother. That's exactly what they're doing. They acknowledge that other mothers exist, right? There's birds and they have baby birds. This is about specific mothers. So far, Anna Jarvis, two thumbs up, right? Right. Okay. So the story continues. Uh, they surprise their mom on Mother's Day morning. Uh, they have a surprise for you, but they don't want to tell her what it is. Uh, they're going to tell her after church. And then they love their mom. They give her hugs. Uh, they they snuggle with her in bed. They snuggle with Papa in bed. It's, it's beautiful. That's, that's 
that's it. That's it. They're, they are celebrating. They are acknowledging their mother in a very honest way. And that is simply by showering her with love and kiss. Uh, then they get out to go to church. Now, this is interesting because in the past, we've had Berenstain Bears Mother's Day books that are all about essentially the kids making a mess and mom having to clean it up or making her a car to breakfast in bed, what have you. This is more about the concept of now we're hitting in the, 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 the overall arching message of this. So they're driving to church and along the way, they notice a lot of cubs with moms. All the moms are out and about, which is interesting. Like they're all just sort of wandering around, I guess. They're not all heading to church, uh, but they're all he they're all out, out and about. And mama says, you know, Mother's Day is nice for us moms. You ever start to think that children everywhere think of their own mothers, think their own mothers are the most special mothers of all. And the cubs are like, oh, I never thought about that. Now, of course, this is a broad generalization. We know that there are many people in the world who do not think that their mothers are the most special mothers of all. Uh, they might think that their mothers are special, but not for good reasons. Uh, exceptional, but not for positive reasons. They are exceptions, certainly. Exceptions to the concept that all mothers are amazing. Uh, you know, I'm just saying there's plenty of bad moms in the world, right? Uh, I am sure none of them listen to this show, but there's plenty of bad moms in the world. I don't want to let that go. Mother's Day is one of those special days that people set aside to remind us that not everybody has a good relationship with their mother. They take to Facebook and they tell us that remember that not everyone likes their mom, which true, very true and good to acknowledge. But there's only a few holidays people do that on. No one really does that on Father's Day, which is bizarre. Like I don't, people don't pile onto Father's Day and be like, what about all of us who hate our fathers? I don't hear many people talking about Father's Day. Uh, and also there's probably people all over the world with trauma related to every holiday. So I think it's high time we recognize that, that there's probably bad feelings associated with every time type of commemorative day for someone out there. Uh, so just remember who you're talking to uh, before you just go throwing your Happy Mother's Days around. Um, uh, so the, the the Cubs look and Officer Marguerite is directing traffic and someone is handing her flowers out of a car. Why? It's her children bringing her flowers. And they're like, I had no idea that Officer Marguerite even had kids, which is funny because there's not that many Cubs in Beartown. And I mean, I guess there are now that I'm looking at this picture. There's a lot of Cubs in these pictures. Uh, there's also a woman on a moped with a jacket on that just says mom on the back which i guess maybe she just found out i don't know uh but i do find it hard to believe the cubs do not know of other cubs who exist in bear town especially considering that it looks like the daughter of officer marguerite is sitting in the back of the car with a pink bow in her hair not unlike sister so you would think that sister would know there was another bro wearing cubs somewhere in bear town in any case maybe they live in big bear city maybe officer marguerite i don't know comes in i does she drive in every day do, i doubt it to, to direct traffic most likely Likely not. Uh, but she is a mom. Um, but you know who else is a mom? Dr. Gert Grizzly. And so are other hospital moms. In fact, you see all these people bringing flowers and candy into the Bear Country Hospital, which is very sad, but, you know, because there's a lot of women and people in the hospital. Uh, but Dr. Gert Grizzly is outside. Maybe she's being dropped off. Yeah, it looks like Dr. Gert Grizzly. She's being dropped off by her family. We see her two kids look to be about toddler age, uh, giving her a hug goodbye and showing her a card. We don't see the driver of the car so we don't know who Gert Grizzly is with or if Gert Grizzly is with anyone uh we just know that she's a mother and brother's like I thought she was just a doctor and mama laughs and says doctors nurses police officers emergency crews homemakers like me we can all be mothers we can all be mothers and bro it seems like brother would have would have guessed wrong in that classic joke turns out the doctor was the boy's mother brother think about that and get your prejudices straight so uh they drive by farmer Ben's farm uh and they're celebrating uh, Mother's Day says, we love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day on the side of the barn. Uh, but they have to work. So Mother's Day or no Mother's Day, farm work needs to be done every day of the year. So Mrs. Ben is hard at work. Uh, but you see their sons and daughters hanging up this banner. I didn't even know the Bens had kids. Uh, we see four Bens uh, with paint and a banner. It says, we love, we, so like I said, it, it says, we love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. It's a huge, like, king-size sheet that they've hung on the side of the barn. But the words are only in the upper part of the sheet. I assume they're going to write something else below it. Otherwise, there's a lot of dead space on this Mother's Day sheet. Just telling you. Just saying. I'm just saying. Graphic design. Graphic design. Here's a fascinating thing. So, in the chapter books, in the big chapter books, we were introduced to Two Tall Grizzlies' extended nuclear family. Uh, his father, Two Ton, uh, his sister, Too Much, uh, and the mom, Tutu. Uh, all the Grizzlies, they 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 own a Bear Country junkyard, and Two Ton looks just like Too Tall, uh, Too Much, the the teenage daughter is just kind of a, a breezy teen, but we rarely get any kind. We've seen two ton in the storybooks, but this is I I know we've touched on the rest of the family.
family, but it's really cool to see the junkyard. We see the whole family taking their mother out, uh, I guess, to church. They're all going to church. Church-going family. Uh, but I, I really love that. I really love... I like how Mike has worked over the years, worked these chapter book characters into the into the picture books. And I like seeing Too Tall's extended family. They're gruff but lovable. Uh, and too much the daughter will put you in traction if you disrespect her. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, they make it to the chapel in the woods. They're greeted by, you know, Preacher Brown. Uh, Mrs. Grizzle, their babysitter from the Berenstain Bears and the Sitter is there with her uh, adult son. He's very large. His son is Zed. He's visiting from out of town. Uh, they go and sit down in their pew. Mrs. Brown, who we cover in uh, one of the Gifts of the Spirit books, Preacher Brown's wife, who does a lot of stuff around the church, is there handing out programs for the Mother's Day service. And they acknowledge, once again, that she does a lot of work in the church. And in fact, Mama thinks that she works harder than the preacher. And uh, and I'm not and I'm not sure that she's wrong. Uh, and Sister's like, ah, it's a shame that she has to work on Mother's Day. And Mom's like, well, yeah, but, you know, her whole family's here. And that's what's most important, that our families are around. And inside, she's probably going, it is a shame she has to work. So they all sit down. Uh, the, the Grizzly Gramps and Gran are there. They tell him, we got a surprise for you after the service. Preacher Brown comes out and he's like, hey, Mother's Day, special Mother's Day blessings to all the mothers here and everywhere in Bear Country. On this day, we give thanks to God for all of you and for what each of you's done for us, for feeding and caring for us, for guiding our feet on the paths of the Lord, and for raising us to be good, strong, and healthy. Here's my favorite part of the book. He says, as the Bible says, your mother was like a vine in your vineyard planted by the water. It was fruitful and full of branch. And the cubs imagine Imagine Mama Bear sprouting leaves and branches covered in vines. They giggle in church and Mama hush. Now, what I love about this is that your mother was like a vine in your vineyard, planted by the water, fruitful and full of branches, is from the book of Ezekiel. What is the book of Ezekiel? Well, Ezekiel was a prophet, and uh, and this is from uh, from the Tanakh, Tanakh, uh, from the Nevi'im, the books of the prophets. Uh, this is Ezekiel was sort of pulled aside by God and is like. Oh, Look, I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff and uh, you're going to have to take it out and tell the Israelite because I got bad news for Jerusalem. Uh, they've been kind of ticking me off by worshiping idols and not being very cool people. So you're going to have to go out to these communities and tell them that I'm going to rain fire and destruction on them. Anyone who runs away is going to be killed and anyone who sticks around is going to die of starvation or disease. Uh, don't worry though. I'm going to have people who know go around and mark the foreheads of all the people who didn't tick me off so they won't die. Now I'm going to need you to go out and I'm going to lay out exactly how you're going to do this. Oh, don't be freaked out by the way. Here come the cherubim. Here come the Nephilim. And there's a lot of like and there were wheels within wheels within wheels and four-faced demons or not demons but like the four-faced cherubim and they had one in the face of a dog and the face of a baby and the face of a man and the face of a lie. Like a lot of that. Kind. I mean it's a Zeke, he's a prophet. He's being shown stuff by God. He's like, <laughs> and like just having these messages like beamed into his head. It's kind of a terrifying book just because it's the prophecy of God being like, you got to go out and tell everybody they're going to die. I know I once promised not to kill every human being on the earth ever again. So I'm just saving it for my chosen people. And he also tells a few like sort of uh, metaphorical stories. There's a lot of stuff about vines in this, in this, in this book of prophecy. Uh, so this isn't the first appearance of vines. Now, what's interesting though, is that this quote specifically, uh, your mother was like a vine in your vineyard planted by the water it was fruitful and full of branches is not from a section about moms it's from a section that is that is known as the lamentation for the princes of israel uh as for you take up a lament for the princes of israel and say what was your mother a lioness among the lions she lay down among the young lions she reared her cubs she brought up one of her cubs and he became a young lion after learning to tear his prey he devoured men when the nations heard of him he was trapped in their pit with hooks they led him away to the land of Egypt. When she saw that she had waited in vain, that her hope was lost, she took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He prowled among the lions and became a young lion. After learning to tear his prey, he devoured men. He broke down their strongholds and devastated their cities. The land and everything in it shuddered at the sound of his roaring. Then the nations set out against him from the provinces on every side. They spread their net over him. He was trapped in their pit. With hooks, they caged him and brought him to the king of Babylon. 
They brought him into captivity so that his roar was heard no longer on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your vineyard, planted by the water. It was fruitful and full of branches because of the abundant water. It had strong branches, fit for a ruler's scepter. It towered high above the thick branches, conspicuous for its height, for all its dense foliage. But it was uprooted in fury, cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried up its fruit. Its strong branches were stripped off and they withered. The fire consumed them. Now it is planted in the wilderness, in a dry and thirsty land. Fire has gone out from its main branch and devoured its fruit. On it no strong branch remains fit for a ruler's scepter. This is a lament and shall be used as a lament. So it's not good, is what I'm saying. What it's uh, Yes, it's saying your mother was like a vine in your vineyard, planted by the water, fruitful and full of branches because of all that water. But then in immediacy, it's like, but that you, now mama was ripped up and now it's planted in a desert desolate desert and good luck out there the mom is israel by the way this isn't this this isn't about a, an actual like lady it's not about a mom i mean it's about the mother israel and like the pro i mean the whole book of prophecy is about how ticked off god is at jerusalem and how he's gonna like rain fire and brimstone and yada 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 and this is the lamentation saying like look you just can't you don't have any real leaders your vines are withered you you've been up rooted and cast away now you're out in the desert uh uh good i mean you don't even have strong enough branches to hold a ruler step you can't even have a king because it's not ready for it. there's a lot of that in there it's not about moms preacher brown it's not this is he it's like he flipped through almost like mom, 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 mother there we go mother mother uh your mother is like a vine uh full of water I guess like that's it. I mean, I get he's like, we love our moms. But then he reads the thing about like the mom who gets uprooted and thrown into the desert. So I don't know. In any case, uh, church ends and they go to the bear country and it's a beautiful day. Now, do does this does this story acknowledge Mother's Day the way the Jarvises wanted Mother's Day? Well, to an extent, uh, it's not about public health and it's not about going out and doing good acts, but it is about focusing on specific mom, Mama Bear and Grizzly Gray. It also acknowledges that there are are specific moms all throughout bear town uh and i guess like the commemoration of mother's day the, the let's commemorate our mothers we don't see them giving chocolates and we don't see them giving a card to their mom so i'm going to say the fact that the cubs did not make a car for their moms or spend money on a car for their mom did not give them can means yes and jarvis anna jarvis would have been thrilled with the berenstein bears mother's day blessed because what are the blessings i guess just having a mom i guess is, is what is what the blessings are they don't really get into it it's very vague and non-specific but the mother's day i mean and then a weird passage from ezekiel but uh but yeah that's that's the berenstein bears mother's day but i mean there's really not a, like i wanted to talk a little bit about the origins of mother's day and i wanted to see if this book conformed to the idea of mother and i think it does i think it's a pretty good book plus you get to talk about biblical prophecy i get i guess like that's that's a that's a plus like if your kids want to know about ezekiel it's a good place to start tell them like you know it's not really about moms it's not really about like the mother is israel because like you don't forget that like israel is you know they were cast out into exile their land colonized by outsiders and they were they were kicked off their land uh long time ago. long long so uh uprooted mama that's that's the story so in any case that is the berenstain bears mother's day blessings living lights uh faith story i guess kind of it is kind of i mean they go to church in it it's one of those weird ones it's not really like telling you much about religion they just go to church in it uh be a mike berenstain go out and do good acts uh, i guess uh remember what anna anna original jarvis did you know she she was a community organizer she saw a need in her community and she went out and she did and i think that if you're going to do something to commemorate your mom that's a good way to do it did your mom like the community if so that's a good way to commemorate your mom instead of buying her flowers say hey i started a shelter then don't invite her because you didn't really start a shelter uh, unless you did unless you started a shelter. if you're a listener and you started a shelter then congratulations you did it uh but mother's day bless uh thank you so much for joining me thank you so much for listening if you listen to this before mother's day and you celebrate mother's day and you have a mother that you want to celebrate and you do then happy mother's day if you don't have a mother or it makes you sad or you don't want to think 
think about your mother or for any reason like that, then ignore it. Ignore it. Go to uh, the bookstore. Hang out at a bookstore all day. And just chill. Uh, you don't have to think about it. Uh, but you can join me next week when I will not be talking about Mother's Day. I'll be talking about another Bears Day, Bears Book. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being a part of this wild experiment called Deep in Bear Country, Bear and Stain Bear Cast. Uh, and uh, I have other shows. Go to my YouTube channel if you're not already on it. Uh, and if you go there, just subscribe. Subscribe. I like seeing new subscribers. It's funny. Uh, I get new subscribers every once in a while, and it makes me feel good. It gives me a little, like, jolt. And then people leave mean things, comments on my videos, and I feel sad. But you don't have to feel bad for me, because I have everything I need right here in my time. All right. I will see you all next time. Deep in Bear Country.